Hey, hey, you guys. Thanks for watching Dee Dee Croy with My Favorite Groomer. So today, um, I'm going to read out a Facebook message that I got from a client. And you guys uh, probably know this client if you have known Domino being groomed. He's a Pomeranian. And he's black and white. And that's why, they, you know, the Domino colors are there. But I hadn't seen him for a while. And she is uh, the pet parent's a bartender. She lives in Dallas. She drives really far. Uh, when I first started grooming Domino, he was aggressive. Um, she had to find me through referral. So, I mean, her tra travel to me is probably a good hour, you know, 48 minutes or so or more, depending on what time of day she would drive out to have her pet groomed. And then she would work these, like, horrendous hours. So I used to bartend, too, so I knew that she worked until 2, 3 in the morning or later sometimes. So I would always try to work with her on her schedule. So I haven't seen them, and I have to pull the file to be exact, but maybe like, I don't know, over six months or right at six months or more. And I don't usually check my Facebook messages. They're actually messages in a spam folder called message requests. And for some reason yesterday, which was uh, Memorial Day, I happened to click on it. And I saw that I had a bunch of messages that if you're not a friend of a friend, that type of thing. And then by the way, you can send me messages at my favorite groomer on Facebook instead of a personal Facebook page is she's not a friend on Facebook. And so it went to spam. If it's someone you don't know, be safe about it. Okay. People just understand social media is what it is. People have fake profiles all day long. Don't not, don't go into it. Not knowing. Okay. So I do know this client and I have um, some heartfelt news to share with you. And the reason why I want to share with you this news is because it's really important. And this is just one story out of, I'm sure, many, many stories across the world of the same type of thing happening. But we just don't really think about it. And we don't really know or we don't know to think about it like this. Okay. So I'm going to tell you her message and then I'm going to give you a couple scenarios that have happened to me personally that have made me really go, you know what? I'm not going to sell that kind of stuff anymore. I do sell some stuff, but not all of it anymore. And I'll tell you why. Okay. So her message says back in April, and this is, you know, um, May 27th, you know, 28, 2019. And so in April, she sent this message to me. Hey, Dee Dee, I know it's been a while since I've talked to you. I wanted to let you know Domino passed away. He passed away a few weeks ago. He was only four years old. It was very horrible and tragic. But maybe you can warn your clients. He choked on a bone. I couldn't get it out or Heimlich it out. I just watched the video of you grooming him and loved seeing him. So I... I, you know, felt it. I imagined it was April when she sent it. It was prior to that few weeks beforehand of the message that he passed away. And I imagined what was going on in that moment. I had a lot of questions, you know. And sometimes clients never tell you that their pets passed away. And I, I am not upset by it, but I just wish you'd share. Because I spend a lot of time with my groom clients. Let me know why you haven't come back. Even if it's bad news, it's really hard to talk about our family members and our fur family members for sure, because they, unlike people, give us barely any judgment, if at all. I mean, you, you might rescue an aggressive dog who is aggressive to you and might bite you all the time. Okay, we've seen that with Sammy Davis. But for the most part, when you love a dog and you've accepted them into your life and your home, they really do unconditionally love you like no human could ever. So when I read her message, initially, I probably didn't start crying. I didn't really. I considered everything first. I asked a lot of questions. In that like, few seconds, I was asking all these questions like, how, why, did you just watch it? it did, you, there was nothing you could do. Did you run to the emergency room? All these different things ran through my head. I actually haven't read her response yet. So those are some of the things I, 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 uh, I said, I am so sorry first. And then I came back and had questions. And then I kept writing emails and checking people's messages and all of a sudden I just broke down. I broke down crying because Domino and I had come a long way. The first time he came in for grooming, he was mean. I put a muzzle on him and I might have put a cone head on him too. And the next time he came in for grooming, it got better and it got better and it got better. 
and it got so good that I want to say I, I might have just loosely muzzled him just to make sure if I hit a knot he didn't get upset with me without warning but it was just a whole different relationship. He was a great dog. Um, we had a stint of not me but she lives in an apartment complex and they just would not help her kick these fleas. The apartment complex itself had probably fleas, the inside of them had fleas and it just took months to kick fleas. She went through a period where she was paying these excessive flea charges and I was doing everything I could to help her not pay them. We tried everything. From Frontline, Frontline to Frontline Plus to Frontline Plus Gold, whatever that is, right? It was just like we were trying everything. <sighs> Nothing seemed to work. So she continued to be a client and I, I respected her and loved her for it and her loyalty was amazing. But I think because we had come so far with her dog, she knew she could trust me. She would either wait in the lobby or wait in her car. Or at the, she got to a point where she could just run to the store and come back and we'd be done. I'm not crying right now, but my heart really hurt and it still will hurt forever because he's no longer with us. Her response was, you know, after I asked a few questions too, I said, I'm really sorry and all that, all that first. And then I came back with some questions like, but can you tell me what ha like what kind of bone? How did it happen? I already kind of have an idea, but her situation, so I could tell her story. She says, that would be good if you could share. It was right after I got home, I gave him one of those dream bones, small and digestible. He came running from the other room already choking. I tried to give him a pat on the back to dislodge and then Heimlich and even reach down his throat but it was too late and too far down. It was the most horrible thing I've ever experienced. I cry every day that I couldn't save him. My entire world revolved, revolved around him. I gave these bones to my old palm too and my mom gave to her dogs. It's been two months and I'm not doing too well. <sighs> my golly, you know, um, It's digestible. I'm sure the package says that. Uh, there are some, I can't say dream bones, but nylon bones, nyla bones, all different kinds of stuff on the market. And I'm only saying dream bones as it's written here in her response to me. So I don't know that I've ever bought a dream bone. I'm not really sure. But I can tell you I have bought many other bones because as a business, I do sell, sell and I, or I have sold things uh, as such. Um, to pet parents just like you who I'm sure you do have bought all kinds of treats and bones and antlers and all these different things that are on the market okay there was a client that I would pet sit for I had never groomed the dogs for her she found me on um, a social media maybe I know where she found me but I'll leave that out but it's just a, a place you can go find people and she was really happy about everything she had read and she used my services and I had done toenails for her pets at her house and I remember I would go to her house and pet sit and bring my dinner and stay as long as I could, you know. It was really hard because it was a smoking house and I, I can't really tolerate it that much but I did everything in my power to stay as long as I could every time. And one of the things she would have me do is on the way... I don't do this and you guys may very well do it and that's all your thing okay no one's telling you what to do and what not to do I'm sharing a story with you so I would let the pets to go potty and when they would come in their uh, treat because they went to potty was a treat okay and they had uh, their own Ziploc bags and they were all small dogs and one of them was like the size of a Sally, a little Chihuahua, real skin, skinny and tender and fragile and long-legged and bouncy, but very senior. She was so sweet. So she would get, everyone got their own Ziploc bags. So it would be like, you know, the names were already on there. So you just do what you're told. So everyone gets a treat. So we're watching cable TV because I'm cuddling with them on the couch and kind of hanging out. And all of a sudden, the, that Chihuahua runs over. And she's got like this look about her and I thought, what's going on, you know? And so I come, I go, go to her, I can kind of see like, it doesn't look right, but she's not coughing or anything. She's just doing just something. What it turns out to be was this 
whole treat that was hard, kind of like you could crunch on it, you know what I mean? Kind of about that long. It was just lodged in her right here. And I just kind of grabbed her up and uh, opened her mouth and kind of, and I, you could hear it go, <laughs> come out. And I was like, holy crap, look at this thing. I, I think I might have tossed it, but I also think I, I definitely either, you know what I mean, like the proof aspect. So I wrote on the, every day I have a little log, a little notebook that the pet parent, I left there with them. The pet parent got to read it, everything that happened each visit. And I put on there, I would never give that treat to your, your pets again. It got lodged in her throat. And if I wasn't there, you know, let's just say I gave her the treat and I ended up heading out. I didn't hang out to watch TV with the dogs even for an extra 30, 40 minutes. If I hadn't been there, she probably would have choked on it and died. If it didn't go all the way down, you know, and if it didn't go all the way out, it would have just lodged somewhere. So that taught me a lesson, okay? And then I was doing these little things called bully sticks, okay, with my own dogs. And Saki, many of you have seen her on the channel or on the gaming channel, Saki loves chewing stuff. Like, she wa she's an out dog. She's an animal. She wants to chew stuff, like stuff like that. They actually should chew stuff, right? Keep in mind, we have domesticated our animals a lot since they were wild. So just keep in mind what you're giving, you know, and know that they are now, we've changed the dynamics of they, who they are and what they eat and what their organs are used to. All that's a little different than the wild, okay? So I was doing the bully sticks and I would sell the ones that were like, I don't know, six to eight inches right? And then they have longer ones than that. And then they have even longer ones than that. So Saki would chew, chew, chew. And I would notice, okay, I'm seeing some blood on there. So I would get, take it away. You, you can monitor your pets, but once it gets to a point, you don't just let them have a chew toy or something for hours. Don't do that. You'll learn the hard way what that will do. Okay. So one day she's chewing on this bully stick and she's going so fast. She doesn't even give herself time. She's gotten to the point where she has changed and she loves to like take it all in so here she's running around with this bully stick lodged in her throat and at that point I was deciding never to order bully sticks to sell in my store and never to give my dog a bully stick like that I remember a few years back as well and so keep in mind I'm a business okay there's businesses out there selling business stuff right selling dog stuff across the market you know this you drive by these stores you look at these stores you look at these things online you look i don't need to tell you that these things are out there i'm not the creator of them i'm telling you my story so don't get it wrong so you drive by a store and you're just like i know what they have in there okay or i go by this feed store and they have this and this and this just because they have all these things doesn't mean you should buy it and you should buy it for your dog you have to think about what you're giving your dog how long you're going to give that to your dog and what could happen if you give your dog that and it's a bad day because that bad day might not be every day. Saki probably had a bully stick um, once a month for, I don't know, less than a year. It was less than a year than I, I, I always looked at it like it never digested in front of me. It was a lot of chewing, dissolving, but it, once it got to, you got to six inch bully stick and it dissolved to this, then that, that piece, I didn't like to give back to her because I knew that could get lodged. Because she's a small dog, Chihuahua, Chihuahua mix, right? Chihuahua Shih Tzu mix. And her throat is only so long, and et cetera, et cetera. These things you're trying to analyze and go, where could this end up being? Or I used to do antlers, antler pieces. Elk antlers are really, I mean, if you go to these dogs, sales shows which almost every career out there has a show of, it, of its own either a convention or a show whether it's automotives or pharmaceutical or dog stuff and you go to these shows and all like matter of fact last year super zoo 2018 super zoo when i left there i thought wow this is 80 percent food food and treats and i didn't buy none of it you know I, I was like, and I wasn't going to buy any of it. None of that pertained to me. So I thought to myself, I don't know that I would go back because I don't want to buy a bunch of food and treats for the dogs. No offense. I just feel like there's a lot to know about what you're feeding, 
okay and what the impact is on what you're feeding if it's not a food and even if it was but what it is if it's a treat how does it dissolve how does it break down and at what point does it dissolve and what point does it break down so lots of things can get lodged uh, those elk antlers um can get lodged whole if your dog is a maniac like mine and wants to swallow everything whole okay we would i think david would, would tell you he'll go down and give her like a treat and he, she doesn't even chew the treat she wants to swallow it whole so then you go okay i can't give you a whole treat anymore i've got to mash it up you know or i've got to give you a carrot instead and i've got to mash that up too because i don't want you swallowing a whole carrot either a whole baby carrot you know so you think of these things and then be careful because you know you're not sure if they're allergic to it and dogs can be allergic to certain things so things that you need to research yourself but I can tell you that toys, um, I, I don't really do a lot of that. Brownie is a new member to our family and he loves a dog toy. And I'm going to bring this up now because this is a perfect example for me to show you what he can do to a dog toy. So when it comes to Brownie, so when it comes to Brownie, I just love him. And he, for some reason, when we picked him up, you know, with that group of like 27 dogs, he came home to our home and he really showed us that he loves like toys, like furry toys. He loves even balls. Like I haven't yet given it to him, but I did buy him a basketball. I mean, he wants to run around with these toys and flip them up in the air. He came like that. And Saki was uh, like really young when I rescued her and Faith was about one year old when I rescued her. Because of my experience with toys and treats and things like that. I really limit what I give my animals now. Treats are very basic. You know what I mean? Like I know what's in it kind of thing. Or I make them myself. Or it's a very natural vegetable of some sort that I've read and I kind of watch the reaction to my dogs and I don't give them very often. There's might be some supplements I might give. It just depends on their age. And I sell them on my website. And so I, the, what I believe in, I sell on my website. And I'm very quick to just take them everything. I, I remember just donating a lot of antlers uh, and taking them off the shelf. I mean, it really meant a lot to me to get those off my shelf because I learned a lot with that. But Brownie loves these furry. And you got to look where they're made, right? And even if you don't look where they're made or you do look where they're made, Let's just say it is made in the United States. You don't know where that fabric has been made. You don't know where what chemicals on the fabric that your dog is chewing up. But still, we want to be able to allow our dogs to be free and happy. You know, and sometimes a simple toy makes them really happy. But if you give a toy or a treat, you want to be able to pay attention and monitor what they're doing. I wouldn't let my dog nowadays, because I'm wiser, I wouldn't let them chew on a toy for for very long you know I wouldn't let them get addicted to that toy because I don't know what chemicals are in that toy and where it was made unfortunately that is something you have it is head to head you have to pay attention I wouldn't let my dog chew on something for hours without monitoring I wouldn't do that for my child so you shouldn't do it for your dog your dog will tear it all to pieces and eat it all up so with that in mind this is a toy I've been saving for a minute check this out So this toy is huge and Brownie loved it, but, and it's really dusty. It, the squeaky's broke, he chewed it up so much. You can see where he's really gone to town here. He had it outside, so of course, look how dirty it is and he's, he'd be sucking that down. This is where he's like chewing, holding it and chewing it. He really had so much fun with this thing. He was really ripping it, ripping Look how funny it looks. I don't know the chemicals and I was watching him and one morning, he was playing with this sucker, and he was like licking it and chewing it and doing all this stuff. And I went over to him, and I saved that for months now just to show you this, how big it is, okay? He was so happy. He was trying to take it out of the doggy door. It was a gift from someone else. I opened his mouth, and I could see all of this green fiber, this fabric fiber, whatever this is, all in his teeth. All in his teeth. Like, it was so horrible. I had to like pick it all out of his teeth just like this. Pick it out, pick it out, pick it out. And I, I was so like, oh my gosh, what have you swallowed too? This is all that I can pull out of your teeth. But what have you already swallowed? 
the chemicals in different things could cause damage, just like the chemicals we spray on our grass and yard. So be aware of that. If their dogs are running outside to ease their stomach with eating grass, what have you sprayed on your grass or the roots? Be aware. Try to stop them from eating the grass or get them back inside. Don't let them eat that grass, right? It's the same thing with these. I don't know where this came from. I don't know where this fabric is from. I do know right here by looking at this label, it says surface is washable, all materials, polyester fiber, and it's made in China. I do know that. New material only content polyester fibers. I mean, for pets only manufactured for worldwide and corporate. I mean, we can keep going, but I'm just telling you my story about what happened with that product. This product is now in the trash. Okay, boom. I'm finally able to share my story with you in lieu of Domino passing away. And it really is important to me. And I really think you should pay attention. I really think you should listen to your dog and to me and to other people that have gone through the same thing. Don't give treats that might get lodged and don't give toys that might do harm. You need to be careful. I know we want to give our pets something to be happy about, but let's just pick and choose on that because we might not have our furry friend afterwards. Okay. I'm going to leave on this note, a veterinarian that I know well and I've listened to has said, you know, I have heard different things about bones and I have given, and I mean bones like beef stew bones or chicken bones or pork bones, right? When you do pork stew, beef stew, all these bones that we use in our cooking, I had a gentleman come to me for a teeth clean, or a teeth cleaning, like a brushing during an outdoor event. So it was really outdoors, right? It was a border collie. And I said, okay, I'll look. I said, how old's your dog? He's like 13. And I said, well, you know, your dog's probably too old for me to do a tooth brushing. I'm not a vet. I'm not doing a dental cleaning, but I'll go ahead and take a look for you. So I opened the dog's mouth and moved the lips around and I could see that the teeth were pearly white. I mean, so white. I looked at him and said, did you just get a dental done? And he goes, no, I didn't. And he said, why, you know? And I said, well, because the teeth look like they just got a dental. They're pearly white. Dog's teeth are not like that, especially at the age of 13. So I said, well, what are you doing? And he goes, every month his dog gets the beef stew bone. So he goes to the butcher and I asked him all these questions, right? So he goes to the butcher, he goes in there and gets the bone once a month and gets the dog this, this bone. So the dog chews this bone, it's entire, whatever, entire life, every month, yada, yada, yada. So in my opinion, you have a wolf, right? Which we don't have wolves, not all of us anyway. And your wolf is living in the environment and that's what they do. They eat carcasses, they tear them up, they chew them down, their bodies, their tummies, their organs, their whole body is used to this kind of eating. Now, I'm not a specialist in this manner. If you feel like you need more information, please do your own research. I'm not a veterinarian, I'm just sharing you my story. So he would tell me that his dog has been on eating a bone, beef stew bone, every month for many years. And that's probably, in my opinion, why the teeth look amazing. They're chiseling, off, that bone is chiseling off the plaque and yada yada, okay? Now, I would give the same advice to many people, but only if they could understand that if you take a 10-year-old dog that's never eaten a bone before and try to give that dog a bone, it, it might splinter up and rip the whole tummy apart. The tummy isn't even used to that kind of thing. It goes along the way with anything. Your dog has never had a carrot before and at nine years old, you give it a bag of carrots, all of a sudden, your dog's vomiting or pooping, you know, orange. It's probably because your body, the dog's body is definitely not used to that stuff. I know that my tummy doesn't like things that I'm not used to. If I give it a surprise, it gives me a surprise. So be careful what you're giving out there. But I have, you know, I've seen both ends of it. Dog bones, uh, excuse me, like food bones monthly and no problems, right? The dog was so old and great teeth. And then I've also heard and seen the other aspect, which is I gave my dog a bone and he choked on it. Or I gave my dog a real bone and it splintered in his stomach and tore his organs up and then he died. So. For me specifically, I don't like giving our dogs bones. I don't like giving our dogs long stick-like treats. I don't like giving my dogs something I can't break up myself. 
and I'm really leery about introducing new treats and food because it just messes up their system and we saw that with Faith. Anything that was different would just throw her all the way off and sometimes we couldn't even predict when she was going to use the bathroom. It would just be like, there it is and we she wouldn't even know. She'd be like, oh, here it is, my bad. So be careful on switching it up. And I hate to talk to you too much about this subject. I just think it was very important to share her story and Domino's story with you because I know you guys are here because you have pets and you love them. And I wanna do my best for you to keep your pets around as long as possible. A veterinarian once told me, Dee Dee, after all that bone stuff, she said, you should never do bones, Dee Dee, because bones splinter off and splinter off in the stomach. So all that adding up, it really made me think about things. And you just gotta know, if I have a, a, a friend that has a mobile grooming van and I remember she posted either on Facebook or face to face or something where she had mentioned, I always give my dog chicken bones, they're fine with it. And I was like, wow, and her dogs live to be very old, you know, senior like, 10 years old and 13 I think. And I always thought to myself like, wow, she, is she I think she said something like maybe she started off doing it early on so that she, they were, her, their systems were used to it but I had read so many things about chicken bones, I would never do that. Or non-cooked chicken bones versus cooked chicken bones, all these different things. I'm just not gonna go there. You're not gonna see me go there with it because I don't wanna lose my babies, my fur babies, sooner than I have to. So, I just have to say, you know, thank you for your story. Thank you for letting me share it, for wanting me to share it. Her first impact was, please share, please share this. He was four years old. He was too young to pass away. And she is traumatized by this, and I can see why. She's been giving that treat for how long? I've been giving those treats for how long? But maybe we need to go, oh, I don't know that I should do that. Can it break down in my hands? That means it'll break down real fast in their throat, you know, in their tummy. A lot to consider to keep our fur babies around as long as possible. So thanks for hearing me out. Thanks for listening to this. Thanks for letting me share your story. I appreciate you ch reaching out to me and your stories mean a lot to me. If you have something you want to share, please share it down below in the comment section. It really means a lot to me and the fans for you to say what you mean and the non-fans because then you can support what we believe in. Thanks for being here. Be sure to shop at myfavoritegroomer.com and thedogupstand.com, which is dogupstand.com. We really appreciate you supporting us and being a part of what we do every day. Thank you for loving your pets. Be kind to them because we don't have them for very long. We'll talk to you later.